Okay, welcome back to part two. We will start where we left off, um, which was uh, working on the binding. Here I'm just, um, I'm going to start preparing the seam uh, where the hood meets the rest of the cloak. Um, I'm just measuring a piece of ribbon out about twice the length of the neck opening. You can make this a little longer if you'd like, but um, that's really all you need. Um, I just melt the ends so they don't fray. Now I'm just going to fold the ribbon in half and iron it. Um, We're going to be using this sort of like a binding to cover the seam between the neckline and the hood. The extra length on the ribbon that we left when we were cutting um, will be used to tie a bow around the neck um, for added security. Here you can see me finding the middle of the cloak seam and the middle of the ribbon and then I pin those together and then figure out where the edges of the cloak are going to come to and I pin there as well um, because that's where we're going to start sewing from. Now I come to the sewing machine and I start from one end. Um, I brush all the rabbit hair out of the way make sure that I'm not going to stitch over it funny um, and then I start sewing and now you're going to want to double check as you go that um, you're actually catching the ribbon on the other side and um, all you're doing here really is just hiding the raw edge so it doesn't have to be perfect. And here you can see it on the mannequin so far. Um, right now, I'm just finding where the cloak na naturally wants to fold over on itself. And I'm marking where those would meet. Um, I'm going to chain tack them together. If you don't know what a chain tack is, there's a lot of really good tutorials online already. Um, and here I here I start um, doing the chain tack. It basically just holds the two pieces of fabric together but at a distance you can make these chain tacks as long or as short as you want but here I am going for about one inch and I'm gonna see how that looks. Just to go into a little bit more detail about the chain tack, um, I'm using embroidery floss, which is six strands. Um, you can use regular thread. I would just double or triple it. I cut um, my embroidery floss at one meter long, and this was good for two chain tacks at, a, at about an inch long. Professor Pincushion has a good tutorial on how to do the chain tack. Uh, there's also a French tack. You could do either, but the chain tack is a little bit easier to learn. Okay, so once you're done tacking um, your folds down, which on my cloak I had a total of four, um, then we can finally move on and see how it looks. Okay. 
Now I'm just showing you a close-up of those uh, chain tacks. So I still wasn't happy with the way the folds were laying, so I pinned um, along the fold at the very top um, in the back and on the points where the shoulder would be while I'm wearing it. Um, then I'm going to hand stitch those down and hopefully it will give a more natural look. And here I take a 20 inch long piece of embroidery floss with a needle on each end and I find the very point of the crease and I just go through the top of it and then I go through the top of it again from the same direction uh, making sure that both ends of my thread are even and then I go down about a centimeter and poke each needle in from opposite sides coming up in the middle of the crease. Um, don't go through both layers or both sides of the crease um, and then just go another centimeter down and cross over again. And keep doing this for about two to three inches um, and it will give a nice herringbone kind of pattern. Once you reach the end, you're going to want to take the needle from the same side and loop it through the same hole that you just did and coming out in the middle and then go to the other needle and then loop it through the way you just came coming out in the middle and then tie those two ends in a knot and then trim the excess thread at about a quarter of an inch and then use a blunt object to just tuck it in behind the stitches so that you can't see it. I didn't really like the way that the chain tacks held the fold, so I just removed the ones from the front. I left the ones at the back though because those ones were fine. And here's a close up of the stitches. Now I'm just doing the same thing to the back folds. Uh, you might want to go a little longer, making it about four inches. Now once you have both sides stitched, um, just iron the top half of the fold. Um, you want the bottom half to hang a little bit more naturally, so don't iron over that. Now you want to find the corner of your ironing board and use that to iron the stitches on the shoulder seam. Um, just iron the top half, don't go too close to the fur. Now take your rabbit fur or faux fur and find something that's about six inches in diameter and trace out a circle on the fur. Um, then you'll want to cut it very carefully with scissors or with an X-Acto blade from the back so as not to cut too much of the, the length of the fur. Then you're going to want to take a thimble and a needle and do a running stitch all along the outside edge, relatively close to the edge but not too close as it could rip out if you're using a uh, real hide. This can be a bit of a long process and it can make your fingers sore if you don't use a thimble. Once you've gone all the way around, you want to gently cinch it until it's cup or bowl shaped. Um, and then we're going to grab some stuffing and just fill that a little bit. Um, and then pull it tight slowly 
Be really careful when you're pulling because if you're using actual rabbit skin, it can tear the thread right through the hide. Um, but just be gentle but firm. Once you've got it relatively tight and the stuffing is in there, you're going to want to go back and forth across the hole um, with the thread just to make sure that it's extra secure. And then when you're done with this, make sure you tie a very secure knot so that it doesn't come undone. Okay, so for attaching the pom-pom to the end of the tail of the hood, you're going to take another 15 inch long piece of embroidery floss and you're going to poke the needle through at the very tip and then you're going to poke it back but don't pull the thread all the way so you're going to have a loop on one side and you're going to have two threads on the other side. Um, pull them so they're about even and then you're going to do another chain tack um, so you're going to pull the straight um, threads through the loop and then just keep doing that five or six times until you have um, a very short tail. And then you're going to take your needle, put it back on the end, and then you're going to um, attach it to the thread on the pom-pom where you just finished closing up the hole. And then tie that securely. Okay, and now for the final step, we're going to grab our little um, clasp thingies. Um, we're going to measure out where we want them to sit and then trace around them so we know where to place them once there's glue on the back. Okay, now you're going to take some glue that is suited for fabric um, and spread it around the back of the clasp. Um, you're going to want to keep a rag handy uh, to wipe your fingers off. Uh, you'll want to spread this smooth afterwards with your finger. Um, just make sure there's not too much excess glue and that it's not going to run to the front. Um, just use your rag to wipe off any little bits. Um, if your glue dries clear it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, so now you just um, place those right over top of where you traced your line and then you're going to want to put a weight on top um, just to ensure that it, it, it gets a good seal all the way around the edges. Now you just do that for the other side and put a weight on that and let the glue dry. I used just a little silver chain that I had laying around and I folded it over twice and then I hooked this around each of the little knobs. And here it is. Hopefully you guys have all come this far or at least enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any more questions or anything, just let me know.